Hi, I'm Dr. Tim Kaczynski, and today we're going to demonstrate the use of the physics forceps, a grafting technique and placement of a dental implant, on the maxillary um, second bicuspid area. We have a tooth that, as you will see in a few seconds, we have a tooth that is um, badly broken down to the gingiva, uh, determined to be non-restorable. So as we're grafting or placing an implant, the most important technique is that we do an atraumatic extraction, meaning we want to remove the tooth uh, without damaging the tissue, the interdental papilla, and most importantly, the facial bone. That facial bone is really gold to us. So we'll demonstrate the technique, but before we do that, let's show you the area and um, show you uh, exactly what we're going to do to remove this tooth atraumatically. So you can see we have a badly broken down maxillary second bicuspid tooth that we want to remove. And the most important thing with the physics forcep is that we develop a purchase point on the palatal aspect of the tooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a high speed with a surgical burr and just uh, remove a little bit of tooth structure, not palatal bone, uh, but tooth structure, oh, maybe two, three millimeters subgingival. And this will allow me to, to have a purchase point when I use the physics forcep, which we'll demonstrate in a few moments. So I'm taking a surgical burr and not removing any palatal bone. I'm just going to engage the tooth to flatten off the surface, maybe two or three millimeters subgingival. Now we're going to use the innovative physics force up and the standard set, as many of you are aware, um, have four different instruments, a maxillary right, maxillary anterior, maxillary left, and a universal mandibular. Here we're using the maxillary right physics force up which consists of two pieces. There is a beak which will engage the palatal surface of the tooth structure and I just flattened it so we should have a good base and then a bumper which will be placed as high up the vestibule as possible, up at the mucogingival line angle. And we will use some, some levering techniques. I'm going to rotate my wrist towards the corner of her right eye. I'm not using any forearm or bicep pressure. And let's see how well this works. So I'm going to engage my physics force up to the palatal surface of the tooth. Excuse my fingers here. And I'm placing the bumper up the vestibule as high up as I can. Now if we back off the camera just a little bit, I want you to show my hand position. And you can see I'm not squeezing the instrument. I'm just very lightly holding it, really with a finger and the tip of my thumb. I'm not squeezing. You could actually grab this instrument quite easily from me. And what I'm doing now is I'm simply going to rotate my wrist towards the corner of her right eye. Now this may take a minute or two or three minutes, but I'm using constant pressure, not squeezing the instrument, using constant pressure, kind of rotating, and I felt the tooth pop. You'll see it in just a second here, I think. And you can actually see the tooth popped out of position. And I'm taking a tooth delivery instrument um, by Golden Instruments and just simply grabbing. And we remove the tooth atraumatically, most importantly, maintaining that facial plate of bone, which will make my uh, grafting and implant placement that much easier. So to place a dental implant, I'm going to start with a, a pilot drill, which is a 2 millimeter, 2.2 millimeter drill, and I'm going to establish my, my vertical direction uh, into the socket. I will then graft the site and then place my implant. We're using the tooth as a guide as far as size goes, but as you'll see in the radiograph, we have lots of bone to work with here. So I'm engaging solid bone. And then 
we'll go through the, the series of um, larger and larger diameter burrs until we get to the correct size of implant that we want. So what we like to do, we're going to use a, a tricalcium phosphate material, which is a synthetic material. And in so doing, I will harvest bone using an insulin syringe um, from the socket site and mix my material uh, with the patient's own blood. So we have our tricalcium phosphate material and I'll just pipette the patient's own blood into it, saturating it, and mix it, and use this uh, into the grafted site. So I'm taking a nice instrument, a carrier, with the bone material, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add it to the socket. Now the important thing with this type of grafting, with any type of grafting material, is you want firm pressure, but you don't want to smash the particles. So I'm not, it's not like condensing amalgam. You just want it gently placed into the socket to fill the gaps and as I told our patient it's like almost like caulking because the extracted socket, the tooth site, the extracted tooth site is shaped like an egg where an implant is is round. So we can see how the grafting is just passively placed in the socket and we'll thread the implant right into that um, defected area. Here we're using a Glidewell implant, a 3.7 diameter by 11 and a half, which was dictated by the tooth that we removed. And what I'm doing is just engaging the implant, hand tightening it. And then I'll take a torque wrench or a ratchet and simply place the implant to the depth that we determined to be appropriate. And that will be just slightly apical to the extraction site crest. Our implant is subgingival, um, about two millimeters or so, which will give us a good aesthetic result. But most important, using the physics forcep, I was able to maintain that buckle plate beautifully.